correct. Uh, Mina, are you? Yeah, you, are you a co-host? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so on that on that note, our next guest is um, Mina Chetkaya Rundell, and Mina, this is actually going to be a third time presenting I think at Toronto all without ever having visited so hopefully this pandemic can end in next year yeah. next year in Toronto uh, yeah. but uh, she's uh, she's also a Duke and also at our studio and is going to talk about uh, reproducible authoring with with Quarto so thank you very much Mila. Yeah, thank you very much thanks for having me um, I am going to put a um, link in the chat and I'll ask that you click on it. Um, and if I've set things up correctly, put your hands in your pockets and then hopefully I can uh, progress things for you instead of you having to do that. So let me go ahead and share my screen. So today I want to talk about reproducible authoring with Quarto, but um, before I do that, I am going to rewind back to last year where I had the honor and the pleasure of giving one of the keynotes at this conference. Um, and it was titled In the Beginning Was Our Markdown. And I finished um, that talk saying, our markdown continues to facilitate reproducibility no matter what your scope and experience. Um, it was all about how I've been both using our markdown and also teaching with our markdown. And we're gonna fast forward now to today. Um, and I am going to talk about Quarto because the story continues, um, but in a new form. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about next generation R Markdown Quarto today. So you might be thinking Quarto. So Quarto is a, a multi-language next, gen next generation version of R Markdown from our studio. Um, it does include dozens of new features and capabilities. I think uh, many of us here um, are R Markdown users, I believe. And so the way I would summarize this is that it has, um, there are many, many disparate um, packages in the down ecosystem, right? There's book down, blog down, R markdown, so on and so forth, each of which have fantastic um, capabilities, but you kind of have to keep it in your head straight, uh, which one to use when, uh, which one has which functionality, and also sometimes there are syntax differences between them. So Quarto is a system where we can bring all of that together. Um, it is also able to render most existing R Markdown files without modification. And that is actually where we're going to start off today. So I am going to just dive in and be brave enough to do a live demo today and hope that this does not fail on me. So let me go ahead and set this aside. Um, what I am going to do is start with an R Markdown file. Um, and I apologize in advance that sometimes I'll be looking away, but I have um, I'm doing a live demo, but I am not unprepared. I do have my notes here somewhere. So I want to take a look at them to make sure that I'm keeping us on track and in time. Um, so what I have here is an R Markdown file, and this is actually the R Markdown file um, that I um, had screenshots from when I gave this talk last time. So let's go ahead and knit that file um, and take a look to see um, what that gives me. I am going to be using the lovely Palmer Penguins package for a couple examples. And hopefully this looks very familiar to those of us um, who come from the R Markdown land. And I'm sure that doesn't define everyone who's watching this talk. So I both apologize a little bit for focusing so much on this, but that's where my heart has been for a decade at this point. Um, but also I will make some uh, remarks about um, the multilingual uh, aspect of Porto towards the end of the talk. Um, I have this R Markdown file, and the first thing I'm going to do is, before moving on to Quarto, I am going to switch over to the visual editor. Um, this is a new feature of the RStudio IDE. It's actually been around for um, over a year right now, but it has been getting better and better. And what you can see is that it becomes, once you switch over, it becomes a lot um, harder to tell the difference almost between the source document on one side of your document and the output on the other side of your document. Um, uh, so we can actually do things like, you know, bolding text and whatnot using either shortcuts or the menu items. So the authoring experience gets a lot closer to say, perhaps you're working in Google Docs. I have had my students use um, 
uh, the visual editor over the last year. And I think uh, one of the things that I am finding is that for those who are new to coding, um, even though the um, kind of the cognitive load of also learning Markdown as a language while learning R wasn't too steep to be perfectly honest because it's meant to be a very simple language. It was there and kind of the source editor looks a little bit different than everything they've written in before if they've never coded versus the visual editor looks a lot more like things they've written in uh, before. So that has been a nice kind of step and that was in preparation for changing things up um, or basically revamping things completely. So what I'm going to do next is let's go to my files pane. I am going to close out of this file and I'm going to do something pretty hacky and rename this file to have a new um, suffix QMD for Cordo Markdown. And without changing anything, let's go ahead and open that document. And you can see that the button has now changed to render from knit um, and you should be able to render any existing R Markdown documents without any modification. So if you are switching from R Markdown to Porto, the first step of just changing your file type should be pretty straightforward. Next, we're gonna focus on some of the features uh, of Porto um, that are specific to Porto or that are also shared with R Markdown, but work nicely with Porto. But I think it's useful to know that this switch is a pretty, um, kind of smooth uh, switch over to begin with. Um, let's start with our, and I'm also going to go over to the visual editor for my editing. So um, I can see kind of my text for my code chunks uh, separately a little bit better. And um, one of the things I'm going to change is even though this YAML field does work, uh, Quarto actually uses a new YAML, YAML field called format. And um, so if I want an HTML format, this is what things should look like. Let's go ahead and render that as well. Um, and we can use the um, other uh, formats that you might be used to from our markdown. So if we were to convert this to PDF, um, we can actually get a PDF output. And one of my uh, favorite things about this is that the PDF output can also be viewed in the RStudio um, IDE as opposed to popping out. Um, as a pop-up window. Uh, the PDF rendering is slightly slower, but I can actually see my PDF here. I can inspect my document here. And all of that is now built into the RStudio IDE. And Corto comes with a distribution of tiny tech. So getting started with knitting to uh, PDF is pretty straightforward. Um, PDF does not happen to be my favorite output. So I am actually going to revert back to HTML. Um, and let's try a few more things. Let's also try this new feature called render on save, which gives us live rendering. So let's go ahead and add some text to our document and save. And you can see that I didn't have to click the render button. Um, this could get frustrating if I had uh, lots of computationally heavy code chunks in my document that I haven't properly cached. But if you don't have those and you have a simpler document and you want to kind of see the changes um, as you type them, I think this is a really nice way of not having to move away uh, from your authoring and kind of seeing the changes right away as they happen. Um, let's think about what else we can do. Um, another thing we can do uh, that but works really nicely in the visual editor is um, working with citations. Um, this is um, something that I used to find quite cumbersome uh, to do in our markdown. I often, and also in LaTeX 2, to be perfectly honest, so that's probably on me, but um, I, um, it's usually hard for me to remember, do I do an at sign or do I do a ref? So even though I like writing code, certain things I don't mind offloading to a GUI that will do things for me. So what I am going to do is I will show you that we can insert things um, using either the insert button here, uh, the menu, or I can do um, command um, and forward slash to open up this insert anything menu and pick citation. So I can pick, I can actually do a DOI search. Um, I have like a cooking show prepared the DOI for you. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And you can see that it will do the DOI search for me. And I can decide whether I want to use in-text citation or not. In this case, I am not going to do that. 
and this will create a reference file for me. So it creates my bib file and dumps the bib information in there without me having to copy and paste. So let's go ahead and insert that. And um, let's save our document. And let's see what that looks like. So we can see that the citation has been inserted. When you have HTML output, it does this nice um, kind of hover over thing. And also at the very bottom of your document, it places the citation. You are probably going to want to do that trick you've had to do for years if you have worked with LaTeX or our Markdown where you add a header, something like, so I'll do the, um, bring my insert menu again, uh, pick a second level heading perhaps and say references. Um, and then it should place the, um, the um, citations right under the bottom of that. I also really like using the document outline, which tells me what level headings I'm using. Um, and I can tell here that I should not have used a second level heading that seems to be nested in the wrong place. So I can do, um, I can, uh, you know, change things by simply using the menu and making this a uh, first level header, for example. Um, so other things that we can do um, that work just like our markdown. So for example, in my text here, I said something like uh, this data set contains size measurements from a bunch of penguins. Um, that doesn't sound very scientific. Um, so let's go ahead and actually enter the number of penguins here. Um, so I can use inline chunks just like I'm used to with our markdown. Um, and we'll say and row penguins. And as soon as I uh, click on the back tick again to close this up, you can see that that um, uh, gains the code formatting and uh, saving that should basically render my document again uh, with that code executed uh, using R and placing the number of penguins here. Much of what I've shown here is also doable with R Markdown. So, so far I have only um, demoed visual editor capabilities. So they do actually work there, but I will show a few other things uh, throughout this talk that are Quarto specific. Um, other things that we can do is we can actually free our chunk options from uh, this text string here, which is probably one of my favorite advances in our markdown and Quarto. And initially, perhaps it will sound a little silly. So I can use YAML style chunk options um, to, oh, sorry, set up and message. And in fact, um, I will uh, type this and then um, you can see that things look a little bit different uh, when I'm using YAML style chunk options um, and I can basically remove um, them from here. Now, why might I want to do that? This just seems like work for potentially uh, no reason, um, but let's go down to this uh, code chunk where I have um, a few more things. So I do have a Uh, label, and I do have a warning false. Um, these probably live just as fine in the chunk options on top as they do as YAML style. But something that I find quite frustrating to do when I have to write my chunk options in that first line is what if I want to write some alt text for my figure? And you can see that there is um, kind of autocomplete as well. That's uh, super helpful, I think. Um, if I want to write alt text, and that can be alt text that will be quite long. So I have prepared one here um, for accessibility reasons. If I wanna provide this um, alternative text, I think it becomes a lot easier to edit it in this format than on top stringing along. As your the options that you want to add um, increase, I think it becomes a lot harder to scan for them and edit them in the chunk options on top. So a document will continue to work with mixed style chunk options. Um, if you have tendencies like me, you'll clean up all of them, um, but otherwise um, both of them are valid syntax. Um, other things that we can do is we can actually add chunk options um, up in the YAML as well. So I can add an execute and I can say echo false 
And this will basically have the same effect of having a global chunk option of turning off my um, visibility of my code from my document. So you can see that in my rendered document, I no longer have those. I will go back to making this true because I'd like to show one other thing. Um, we can also add automatic links to our code. If you have seen package down websites where code is linked directly to its uh, documentation. So I'm going to nest this under format HTML and say code link true. And let's go ahead and render this. So my code is now visible because I am, uh, I'm saying eco is true. And I've also turned on code link to be true. So let's go ahead and find a code chunk in our document. So I can see that I can hover over these and I can actually click on it and it will uh, take me to the package down website. So if the package documentation has a package down website, you can basically link to um, code uh, documentation really easily, which I find is a true lifesaver for um, writing um, uh, instructional materials and teaching materials. We talked about alt text um, in the context of um, figures that are generated from um, code, um, but let's go ahead and do this for a second. I am going to uh, delete this um, image and let's think about how I might bring this back. So I'm going to use my insert anything tool again with the forward um, slash and I can browse um, um, my computer for images and I can add my alt text here. I can link to something like this, so on and so forth. And even, um, you know, uh, credit somebody, for example. So it becomes very easy using the visual editor to kind of not have to remember some of the minutia of the markdown syntax and go ahead and be able to do this all at once. I'd like to demo one last um, feature of this and then move on to changing, uh, talking about a different format and wrap things up. So um, we can also very easily add tab sets, which I think uh, I've seen in the context of um, slides used in sure engine slides, but it's really neat to be able to do that easily with HTML documents as well. Um, so let's go ahead and do a forward slash and say, I want some tab sets. And perhaps my first tab set will be glimpse. And then my other one can be a tibble because I want to maybe show my co uh, my data in two ways. So how about we do this? Um, I have one code chunk that takes a glimpse of the data and I will add another code chunk that simply prints out my data for me. And if I render the document and look under uh, the data section, I should be able to see that I can toggle between these easily um, right here. Um, this wouldn't work for a PDF output, obviously, but it's really nice to be able to generate these without having to remember the format. Now for a little bit of wizardry, in my opinion, um, let's go ahead and clean up some of this uh, stuff um, and bring this back to a simple HTML document. And let's also um, make these into slides. Um, so I am going to change the format of my document to reveal JS. I am cheating a little bit because who writes documents with such short sections that would fit in slides? But if you happen to have something like that or you're willing to kind of, um, um, you know, edit your document down, you can see that I didn't have to manually add new syntax for um, slides like slide breaks and stuff like that. I get all of this for free and everything is kind of working by default um, in my slide format as well. The reveal.js format will hide the code um, by default, thinking that you may not want all of that in there. Um, let's go ahead and reload the visual editor, uh, but I can bring those back with eco equals true. So all of this is kind of possible. Uh, let's add one more thing here under uh, format reveal JS. Um, one thing I like to do when I'm teaching is the ability to um, an annotate um, things. So um, I can turn on the chalkboard option 
which will uh, give me the ability to kind of either turn on an actual chalkboard where I can start from scratch or uh, write on my slides and say here I can see a cluster. I can get rid of those easily. Um, other things um, that the slide format gives you is a nice uh, kind of outline of your slides and even tools for uh, speaker view or slide overview or even a PDF export mode. So all of this is built in, which I think is really nice that we're able to do these without having to load um, other packages. Um, going back to my slides now, um, we're back on land. So let's do a little bit more of an overview of Corto. So I have talked heavily about R code, um, but you can use Corto um, with Jupyter as well for running code from Python and many other languages. Um, and Knitter that we're all familiar with, which is kind of the basis for all the R Markdown documents obviously work as well. Um, I have also featured the use of the RStudio IDE, but I know that um, not all of us live in the RStudio IDE, so you can uh, edit Corto documents in JupyterLab, um, you can also do so in VS Code or your any other favorite text editor, and all, these are all live links that you can go to the Corto documentation uh, to find out about the various features of those. Um, if you have a bunch of uh, Corto documents, you might start thinking, how do I organize this into something reasonable? So if I have a folder with a bunch of Corto documents, I might be thinking, can I just render them all at once with a single comment? Or can I have some shared YAML configuration across multiple documents? Maybe write the output to a different folder, like a docs folder that can be hosted. Or um, a feature that I really like is freezing rendered output. I teach 15 week courses through the course of a semester. When I make a course website, I don't want my slides from day one to have to re-render every time I'm pushing changes to that website. So I would like to freeze those so that they only run when I intentionally want them to. So the notion of a Quarto project exists and you can open one of these um, in um, using the um, RStudio ID as well. And it will set up a nice um, kind of um, project R project file for you with the necessary components to build just a, a project with a collection of documents, a website, a blog, or a book. Um, you can go, um, the, the gallery um, has some um, examples of websites. So the Corto documentation website itself is indeed built with Corto. It's probably a really, really complex site you can build with it. I have been uh, teaching a regression course this semester and using Corto for all components of it, including the students learning it. And so the website on the um, other side of the slide is my course website built with Corto. You can write blogs. Um, you can create books. So all of the source code for these are available. If you are enticed to get started, I suggest going to the um, get started documentation. And what we've done here is once you download the Corto uh, command line interface, you can kind of get started by choosing your own adventure. So if you're an RStudio person, that's where you would go. If you live in Jupyter land, that's where you would go. And we have a few tutorials that take you through the basics of things. And once you have been through the tutorials, you may wanna visit the guide um, that has a lot more information. Um, and most importantly, the reference documentation that basically tells you every single YAML option that you can use. And it, I find it so nice to have all of this in one place. Um, some acknowledgements before I wrap up, some of those icons that I used are from Flatart icons and a lot of the information here comes from the Cordo documentation. And you can take a look at the slides and I've also linked to the uh, source code for this slide deck. Um, and after the uh, presentation, I will push my changes to that reproducible penguins um, repo in case you wanna take a look to see what all of that looks like on the source code site. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions. Nina, that's uh, just incredible. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments? I've missed any. Uh, Debbie? Um, do you anticipate this being used for, for publications? You know, instead of people typesetting their, their stuff in uh, LaTeX? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, uh, what's on the roadmap, I believe, on the development side for Corto is to gain the um, gain the um, um, the functionality that the articles package provides right now, where it basically comes with some style files. So that's not exactly implemented as of now, you can pull in style files for LaTeX already, but having that all kind of wrapped up as an option is not there, but that is on the roadmap. And that is in fact, uh, one of the kind of the ideas behind this. I know that um, um, a, a few research groups using this where they are multilingual and also multi-tools. Some people like doing things in our studio. Some people like doing things in Jupyter Notebooks. So this is a path forward with starting with a Jupyter, like IPython Notebook and actually turning into a publication, which is non-trivial um, at this point. But I think that this will provide a, a path forward. Awesome, thank um, you. There's this uh, question about the name. Um, I will link to something about that um, after we're done. Uh, Maria is just asking, can you convert Sheridan slides to Quarto? That's a really good question, Maria. Um, not right now, but that is another set of tooling that the development team is working on. That was one of the feature requests I put in because every day I'm kind of doing that manually. Um, right now, my workflow is get rid of all the three dashes and so on and so forth. But I believe that there will be some conversion tools available um, before um, uh, as part of the development for uh, Quarto. And Romeo says, is it possible to generate APA7 compatible PDF files using Quarto? I'm not sure what that means. So maybe I've got that wrong. Is that an accessibility related question? I'm, I may not be sure. I, I'm not sure actually uh, what APA 7 is. So maybe yes, maybe no. But if you can clarify, I could try to answer. Oh, APA citation style. Um, so you can. Um, so I want to say that you can use whatever citation style you want, just like you could with an R Markdown document and LaTeX. Um, so I would think that the answer would then be yes. Um, but maybe the fact that you're asking this question means there's more to that story. Um, there is documentation on the citation and I'd be happy to kind of look into that as well. Since I don't know exactly what it means to be fully APA 7 compatible, I'm not 100% sure, but I do know that you can easily change your citation style by changing YAML options. Mm -hmm, you're welcome. There are any other questions or comments? Mina, just amazing. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much.